Today I'm going to be um, casting some pen blanks using the new Illuminite or my new Illuminite Clear Slow acrylic. I've never used this before so this will be an interesting experiment. I'm going to tint these dyes with uh, probably a few colors. I'm thinking maybe four. And uh, so I've got multiple cups here to mix uh, the various colors. I'm also going to vacuum the acrylic before I mix it to get some of the bubbles out. And then once it's mixed, I'm gonna use a pressure pot uh, to compress the re any remaining bubbles. For this acrylic, you need scales uh, because this is one-to-one -one based on weight. And of course, I've got some rubber gloves and some stir sticks and various things. Uh, I'm also going to try these mix all dyes for the first time. And I'm using the rubber mold that I actually built in a previous video or made in a previous video. The pressure pot I'm going to use, I actually bought a paint tank from Harbor Freight for $99 and bought some hardware and modified it to make it a pressure pot. And it actually works very well. Uh, it holds pressure and does what I need it to do. But this is my first time also using the pressure pot. I'm ready here. I've got my gloves on. Um, so read the directions. First time using uh, this particular acrylic, this uh, slow, clear, sl slow, excuse me. And again, I need to make sure that I know this mold, each pen blank in this mold takes 70 milliliters of liquid to fill. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get a graduated something. So I happen to have supply of these. Okay. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and pour 30 milliliters of side A zeroed. So side A in the bottle, brand new, never been opened is 495 grams. Side B is 490 grams. Let me re-zero this and try this again. Thumb zero. 490. 490 grams. And then this one. Four ninety-five grams. So there's five grams difference between the two bottles. I'm not sure that's huge, but that what that tells me is I can go ahead and use side A and get 70 milliliters of that in a cup. And then I can weigh that and then I can use a second cup to um, put the same weight in the second cup of side B. So I'm gonna mark these cups, side A and side B. Another 25. And again, this doesn't have to be exact. I just don't want to waste any. So I, I'm thinking if I can get it as close to the amount that I, I need, 
then I'll fill the pen blank up or two pen blanks up and not really have any wasted. If I overfill it, um, if I get too much, then, you know, I'll waste a little bit. Okay, so I've got 50 milliliters in there, so I need 20. 20, all right. And there's 20. And again, because we're gonna weigh part A and part B, Um, I don't have to measure part B as far as how many milliliters. I know it's going to be fairly close because I weighed both bottles and I think they're within five grams of each other. But this way I'll get the exact right amount of part B for the amount of part A that I have. So okay. Zero. Let's measure it again. 81 grams. All righty. I have mine like a sieve, so I'm gonna write that on here. 81. Okay, so in theory, all I need to do now is pour 81 grams of part B in here. And I measured that 81 with the cup, so I'm not gonna zero the scale with the new cup on there. I'm just going to pour part B right in here. Part B is a little thicker. I need to get 81 grams of part B. 58. 59, 71. Now I am introducing quite a few, oops, quite a few uh, bubbles in there. I overshot, I've got 83 grams, so I'm gonna actually top up part A just a tad, and because I want them both to be exactly the same. So this is still sitting at 81. This is part A. I'm just gonna go real careful here. Okay, so part A, part B are still separate, so we're not having a reaction yet. Um, however, you don't want to leave it out too long. So I am now going to take these over to my uh, vacuum chamber and degas them for a little bit. And I'm just going to set these right down inside there. B, put the lid on, and I'm going to start my pump, Let's close these valves up, as the pressure now is building, so what will start happening is, once it reaches a, probably about, getting pretty close, Probably about minus 20 inches of mercury. We'll probably start seeing some bubbling. There are some bubbles in there. They've actually already come to the top and they're starting to pop. And we just passed 20 inches of mercury. So I'm gonna let that go all the way up. We're good here. At 25 now. Get my vacuum pump it out of the way a little bit. Okay. Actually, there's not a whole lot of bubbles. There's some in the part B side, couple in part A, but not bad. I'm gonna let that actually run. Oh, part B is really starting to bubble now and foam up. I don't know if you can see this, but it's like part B is expanding. It's because of all the air that's coming up to the surface. 
It's actually um, raised the water line, if you will, of part B in the cup a little bit. And there's quite a few air bubbles coming out, so that's good. I'm glad I'm doing this. So again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna degas it. Uh, I'm gonna get as close to negative 30 inches of mercury as I can get with this little single stage 3 CFM pump that I have. Um, we'll let that sit for a while. I don't have the same time constraint because I haven't mixed parts A and parts B or A side and B side yet. So it's uh, not, we're not restricted by the uh, time limit yet. Although you don't want to leave it in here too long, um, but enough time for the bubbles to come out. So I'm going to let that sit for a little bit and turn off the cameras and come back. Mixed perfectly well. You've got about 10 minutes, uh, 10 to 12 minutes. I think 12 minutes is the max. So I set my timer for 10. That gives me a couple of minutes to get it in the pressure pot over here um, once it's mixed and poured into the molds. The other thing is, is this mix all, uh, this has got 12 colors in it. They're numbered one through 12. They call it their standard, uh, their standard set of tints. And I'm, I've got color number four, which is oxide red and color number six, which is maize yellow. And then these are luminite flow red dye. flow yellow dye so hopefully um, these will these will be good and then this is micro pearl it's got 652 on it so I'm assuming that's a color code but on the back it says JPX 16 oh maybe it's JPXI 652 micro pearl okay all right so those are the things I'm going to use to color stuff. Uh, we're pretty much done with the scale for now, but I'm going to keep it out just in case. I'll probably just move it out of the way here. Alrighty. And we're actually done with these two bottles. And I'll take those back in shortly. Okay, so let's go check the uh, vacuum pot. Okay, so we're running at about uh, 28 and a half inches of mercury. So, uh, negative 28 and a half, that is, inches of mercury. There are a few bubbles in part B. Part A is completely stable. So, I think part A is actually degassed. Um, eh, it's still got a couple of little bu bubbles. I just saw three. They're coming up every once in a while. Part B is still bubbling fairly good. I'm gonna let some air reduce the pressure because that sometimes helps pop the bubbles and then let it build back up again. I'm probably not gonna do this too much longer. Um, it's been running probably five, six minutes now and not too long, but we'll let it go a little bit longer. I want this to to look good when it's done. So, okay, so I think we've given it enough time. So let's go get it out of the pressure or the vacuum chamber. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Some bubbles in there. They all dissipate when I release the uh, pressure. So I'm gonna turn the vacuum pump off, and I'm gonna start. Releasing the pressure here. So. Of course, there's a helicopter going over right now, apparently. The California Fire Department run these drills about once a month and they all fly in formation and I think that's what's going on because this is about the third helicopter I've heard. So the uh, gas is uh, 
or the air is now stabilized. I'm going to move this out. There we go. This is a plate glass, so. All right, well, that looks pretty good. So we're going to grab the part A, or A part and B part. Here we go. Let's get these back over. So in one, I don't know if it matters which part goes into what, um, but I am going to start my timer. There we go. And I'm going to start pouring, pouring part A. So I'm going to pour a little bit of this into each one of these cups. There we go. There's one. There's two. There's three. And then this one. Each cup's going to get its own stir stick. And I'm going to put a little color in each. I have no idea how much to use. So we'll just uh, do a few drops and see how that does. I don't know if you can see that, that was the uh, number six. A little, um, little streaky. That's the mix all number six. Here's mix all number four. That's three drops. <laughs> Mixing up pretty good. Okay. And then we're going to do yellow, flow yellow dye from Aluminite. Okay. Well, I had this problem with Aluminite the last time. I've tried to pl unplug the holes, but it still just doesn't want to work. So I'm going to grab a different die, cast and craft, shake it up a little. So let's see, it's a little thicker. So there's the number yellow, or number yellow, there's the yellow cast and craft. And again, I'm keeping the stick on the bottom, but I am introducing bubbles. I can see them uh, as I'm mixing. So there's the yellow. And then I'm going to do um, red. I mean, I'll try the, the blue light. Shake it up really good. Now I went through and opened up these, these holes. There we go, there's some red. And, um, the last time I tried to use them, but obviously having them sit for a week, they closed back up. Well, that, that's a fluorescent red if there ever was one. Okay, well, it's a fluorescent red and a fluorescent yellow, but I used a regular yellow. Okay, so here we go. I think I'm just going to pour this into the a little bit into each one of these molds. There's one, and I'm not really paying much attention to how much. 
much I'm pouring just yet. I do want to kind of intermix these. And I'm looking for a random pattern, you know, so we'll see what this turns out like. Let's put some red back. Okay. In theory, I'll need all of this dye, all of this uh, acrylic rather these uh, blanks. Turn the camera off, turn on the vacuum <coughs> pressure. rush there at the end uh, 15 minutes is not a lot of time so I uh, went ahead as you saw mixed up the various colors um, I still have a little left over of each color here so I'm probably a little light in my in my uh, pen blanks but um, mixed up each color I did degas the a part and B part ahead of time. I would wanted to degas it one more time 
after the colors were mixed, I wanted to throw the colors into the vacuum chamber. Um, I just ran out of time. Um, so I might, I might have to think about this a little bit because obviously, well not obviously, but there is benefit to degassing once more uh, after you mix the colors because you do introduce um, some bubbles, some air into the process. And uh, I'm not sure, I know that the pressure pot that I've got it in now, and I did make it in time for the pressure pot, so um, the pressure pot basically compresses the little air bubbles, whereas the vacuum chamber expands, the, it kind of pulls the air, so it expands the air out, and, uh, and, um, pulls it out of the, uh, out of the solution. And, uh, if you do it long enough, there are no bubbles in that solution. So I'm just kind of, I've thrown, I've thrown the remainder, remaining colors in here. I just kind of wanted to see what it looked like, uh, when it was in this little flat thing. So, uh, had an issue with, um, this yellow coming out. Uh, these are fluorescent colors and I guess I didn't realize that when I grabbed them. So I ended up using the Cast and Craft um, uh, Opaque Pigment Concentrate for coloring polyester and epoxy res resins. Okay. Um, I just put like three drops, three, four drops in there uh, and it seemed to uh, color it fairly well, so we'll see how it does for two to four hours. So I'm gonna leave it in there for four hours. It's a little chilly today. It says it's uh, 55 degrees in my garage, so I've got a sweatshirt on. Anyway, um, so I'm gonna leave it sit in here, and then we'll come back and take a look at it after four hours. It's right at noon, so it'll be four this evening. So it's been a little over four hours that that's been in this uh, pressure pot. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure my compressor is turned off, which it is. I can see from here. And I am going to disconnect the hose. It's going to make a lot of noise. Meant to close that valve first so that the air didn't rush out that way, but oh well, I've been learned. So there we go. The uh, pressure has been released. Now it is very chilly. Uh, it's 57 degrees in my garage right now, in my shop. So I, I left this a little bit longer. I actually left it about five hours instead of the two to four like they suggested. This is my first time actually using uh, the pressure pot as well. So a lot of firsts today. Well, let's just see. Well, that sounds hard. So we'll take this out. Uh, I'm not sure if that's visible or not. In the camera, try it on the paper. But it looks actually pretty good. So according to the documentation, I should be able to demote this. I can tell you, I don't know if you can see it on the uh, on the video or not, but it's gonna just pop right out of there without too much trouble at all. I think I'll just uh, do that. And there you go. Slid right out. Um, it actually looked pretty cool. I don't know how they're going to turn. 
Um, but as far as pen blanks go, the color, the streaking, looks like it might, might be pretty cool. Like I said, I don't know if it'll make good pen blanks. Maybe I'll make them into darts or something. But yeah, they look pretty, uh, pretty good. Let's see if I can get how close I can get here on focus. But I'll try the other one. And they are slightly different. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. So there you go. Um, Casting the clear slow aluminite, uh, clear slow, using some dyes, using a pressure pot, using a vacuum chamber, and I don't see any bubbles, so um, it's kind of cool. Thank you for watching.